from Studio 3 at Buzz TV. It's The Horse's Mouth with Tom McManus. All right, welcome into another edition of The Horse's Mouth here at Tommy Max, of course, at my bar. Brought to our good friends at Dasher and at Farther. This time around, we're talking the automobile industry. Haven't had one of those people on the show, but we're going to get into it this time around. Andy Gill is here from Gill Automotive Group. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you, Andy? My pleasure. Jack Sears is here as well from Client Focus How are Media. How are you? Thank you, Tom. Always Man, a pleasure. I, and I mean that. I don't know if we've had an automobile guru yeah. like Andy is on the show, so always great to have a first time. Yeah. Right? Thank you. How long have you been in the automobile industry? Uh, 50 years. 50 yeah, years. Started right. Did you start as a teenager? You get into it after college? How did nah. you get into it? Uh, <clears throat> Graduated college, I uh, was working for a uh, aircraft company. Okay, cool. Uh, actually, an aircraft finance company, calling on aircraft dealers throughout the United States. Okay. <clears throat> Southeast, probably. I'm making a little tiny paycheck. Okay. Got married, had a baby, and said, well, this is not going to work out too well. <laughs> so uh, my wife and I were in Jacksonville, where we're from, and uh, okay. we were living in Atlanta at that time. and. Uh, uh, I saw an ad in the paper for a business manager in a car dealership. Yeah. I said, well, yeah. it works for me. I said, I'll go try it. So I went out and had the interview in the Holiday Inn over here off of Emerson, back yeah. when the Holiday Inn was there, Absolutely. decades ago. Yeah, thank you. And went through the deal, and I said, man, I think you'd kill it in the car business. And I said, well, he told me what it was about. I said, I think I can do that. He said, the only problem is the job's in Atlanta. I said, I live in Atlanta. He, oh. said, he said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm just visiting. Yeah. So I uh, went to work there, and the rest is history. I stayed there five years, worked my way up to the general manager of a store. Wow. Um, it was really good in, in F&I, finance and insurance, that's when you come in and buy a car, and mm -hmm. so you extend the warranties and this type of stuff. Yep. Wound up leaving the retail car business and, be, and went to work for an insurance company selling those products to car dealers. Okay. And wound up being director of marketing of that company five years later. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> wow. I've always well, been one of, these, you know, one of these type of guys that's had a burning ambition to be the, to be the guy. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, a strange story. It was July the, July the 3rd, 1980. I was on a flight from Fort Worth, Texas, where I was living then. Yeah. My wife was in Jacksonville with my two kids for a month with her parents, who's a retired Navy pilot. Yeah. And I'm uh, sitting on the airplane and sitting there flit, fiddling with my paperwork and everything. And this guy sitting next to him, I swear to God, to this day, I don't know his name. I wish I did. He said, son, you look like you're a little trouble. What's going on? I said, well, I, I, I think I want to make a break. And, you know, for yeah. corporate America, I want to be my own guy. Yeah. And we talked about it. This guy was in the, he was in the trucking business in Texas. He looked at me and said, what's the worst thing you got to lose? I said, what do you mean? He said, you're going to go broke? Yeah. I said, I don't think so. He said, what do you got to lose? Yeah, right. And I shook his hand and I said, I just got chills telling you the story. And I got off the airplane and here I am. There yeah. you go. So I uh, spent uh, six years in the uh, uh, insurance business calling on car dealers okay. all over the southeast. Okay. Uh, uh, sold, that, sold that business to Prime America in 1986. Okay, know that. And then bought my first car dealership on three car, car dealerships in Atlanta. Okay. And uh, it's a young man's business. So... Uh, Told my wife, said, this is not going to work out very much right. longer. So uh, a guy approached me, and we sold one, two. I sold the two, first two by myself. Okay. And then I got a phone call one guy on the th one day on the third one, and I said, yeah, you know, let's talk. And anyway, going through that process, um, I really like the way the 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 the, 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 the guy that brought my store hired yeah. a broker, and I yeah. like the process. And we yeah. got through. I said, "Hey, are you guys hiring? You know, I think I'd like to do this." Okay. He said, "No." He said, "Man, you got to be somebody's got to die to get a job with this company." I said, "Well, okay." <laughs> so I was in a dealership talking to one of my friends, and we we're trying to get through the retirement deal. And I yeah. said, "This is not working out." My wife says, "This is not working out. You got to get out of the house." Okay. So I'm talking to one of my buddies. He said, "What are you going to do?" And I said, "You know, I don't know." He said, "Somebody, you know, I really want to get this mergers and acquisition deal." And yeah. he had been one of those, and he said. Uh, he said, "Man, you would kill it with all your with all your, all your contacts yeah, and absolutely. your knowledge, and yeah. it's yeah. like everything I've done my whole life has been a big funnel coming down yeah. to this point in my life." So when when is a dealership? I mean, obviously the people that own it have to be ready, but when is a dealership, from just a business standpoint, ready to be sold? Do you think? Take the emotional side out of it, just from a business. Well, it's perspective. funny you should mention that because it's as much emotional as it is I bet. financial. I yeah. bet it is. You're you're uh, you're selling a family farm, right? 
Right. So uh, the way we go about it, and uh, I was actually, when I went into the business, I spent a year being mentored by a guy in Fort Worth in um, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. We, have, we still have a home out there. Oh, cool. And uh, well, it, I was referred to this guy, and I said, well, I can't believe it, I have a house there. So I worked for him for a year. But anyway, the uh, uh, the way the process goes, goes down is, uh, uh, I employ three people that do nothing but work the phones all day. Okay. And and they're calling. We're not talking with general managers or right. salespeople. We're talking to the guy that owns the dealership. Who, all of these folks are yeah. high net worth individuals. Yeah, sure. And so uh, we're looking for their thoughts on buying or selling. And yeah. uh, usually it's uh, uh, no successor, a son and daughter. They're right. either in the business that never wanted to be. a Daddy wanted me right. to be a car dealer. Right. I don't want to be a car yeah, dealer. Yeah. See that. Uh, it's uh, a divorce, mm -hmm. a financial factory issues, there's got to be a reason for them to sell. Yeah. But I, one thing I found out quickly, if I'm talking to one of them, that they'll find someone that's interested in talking. I'll get on the phone and talk to them, having been a prior dealer. Yeah, right. I said, I get I'll it. I went through this process yeah. myself. Yeah. And so if he says, well, here's my reasons and they're valid reasons, that guy never goes away with me. I mean, I'm right. on him every 30, 60 days because he all he's telling me is, hey, I'm thinking about selling. I need yep. to find out if you're the guy that I want to sell Very it for. Cool. Me. That's the way the process is. Because uh, you hear all the, all the time with different businesses, the third generation, it never works. Does it work in the automobile world? Or is it no, kind of the same no. type What thing? Harvard says 3% uh, survive the third, the third yeah. generation. I think it's 30 or 40% second. Good. Usually it's. Uh, uh, I have so many engagements where I get involved, daddy dies, yeah. and incidentally, the average age of a, of a franchise car dealer in the United States right now is 70.5 years Holy old. Holy cow, no kidding. Wow. Yeah. wow. That staggered me, uh, too. Yeah. Wow, good so, for you. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> As they good say, time, time, time is everything yeah. in every business, right? <laughs> That's how So awesome. anyway, uh, 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 this one young man I was talking to down in South Florida on the coast, he said the first time I called him after his dad died, and we don't look at an obituary and call the next day, but I know, you know, yeah. two or three weeks later, a month later, I call and say, hey, look, Look, been there, done that, and uh, he said, "You know, I never want to do this ever." Yep. But my dad always wanted me to succeed him, and it was a thriving business. But he said, "I can't do it at this point." Right. So, flash forward six years later, he just sold his dealership. All right, so, yeah. that's great. That's got to be a fun job. For yeah, you, oh, it's yeah. got to be yeah. cool meeting yeah. all these types. Of I people. tell you what, Tom, you hit it out of the park today. Yeah. How about it? Having our first auto. I know. Guy in cool. a long time. That's yeah. a great story. Yeah, and, no and that's what's neat about the horse's mouth. We get great stories here. Absolutely. Great uh, legacy of leaders. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and always learning something new, right? No doubt about it. It's yeah. great having you on. Thanks oh, good, for the great, great story. Great. And yeah. good luck with your, you know, your new venture. I know you're off to a great start. So yeah, going. we're, uh, you know, we just hired our fifth person, and uh, uh, we're actually all over the United States. Our, our primary uh, uh, focus is here in the southeast. So okay. we, we do a really good job great. here. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Andy. Great to have you, my Jack. Pleasure. Always a pleasure, my always friend. Enjoy. All right. Make sure you go to the DailyNewsNetwork.com website. You'll see uh, Andy and Jack's profile. You'll see this conversation and hundreds and hundreds of others. Until next time, stay safe out there and be cool. And we'll see you right here on The Horse's Mouth. Cheers. 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 All right. The coach should be going to bed at night thinking about the athlete and how they're going to help that athlete improve. They shouldn't be worrying about how am I going to quantify their improvement or Am I going to have to keep up with all this information? Those things that are kind of background to the coach focusing there on the athlete. And so what Dasher does is it takes all those side things away, allowing the coach to focus then on the athlete.